Hey everyone, it's Tali from the Astro Twins and I'm here with the wonderful Yasmin Boland. How are you? I'm very well, thank you Tali. How are you? I'm, I'm doing pretty good here in Seattle and you're in London town, UK, so we're on totally different time zones right now. But it doesn't yes. matter because we are under the same moon and you are... Yeah, <laughs> yeah indeed. You are the wizard behind Moonology, the Moonology Diary, and um, and you have a new Mercury Retrograde book out too, right? I do. I even have a copy right here. Oh, cool. Show us. Oh, my God. Somebody had to write that book already. My God. I know. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, uh, do you feel like you're quite affected by those Mercury Retrograde periods as a writer? Well, I mean, it's very interesting when you write a Mercury retrograde book because, I mean, part of my thing as an astrologer is to try and give positive vibes out into the world. Um, I actually have a, a not-so-secret-anymore theory that I, I was an Arabian astrologer, I think, you know, like in 7 AD or cool. BC or whatever. And... Um, I feel like I scared, this is something that came to me in a past life session, I scared a lot of people. So here I am in this lifetime trying to offer uplifting astrology to people that will empower them and help them to work with the planetary influences. And then you write a book like Mercury Retrograde and you're like, you know, I'm trying to give the positive of it, but then Mercury comes along and goes, yeah, you want to just paint me as positive all the time? Well, I'll show you. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, the last Mercury retrograde cycle was when the book came out and I was really focused on it because I was, you know, letting people know about the book. And it was so interesting because on the one hand, I could see all the positives that I've written about in the book, but then I had other instances for example, I sent this one email about the book. It was like the last email the night before the book came out. It was to 96,000 people. Wow. And every link in the book was broken. Oh, <laughs> my God. It was oh. like, and I was like pounding the desk and shouting and being a really bad role model to my son and all this. And I thought, but that's the thing. Like, you know, it's light and dark. It's, it's, you know, it's Mercury is the trickster of the Zodiac and Mercury retrograde has its moments. So even though I do strongly still feel like a hundred million percent, it can be something we use positively and it should be something we use positively. You still have to kind of you know, factor in the Mercury retrograde factor when Mercury is retrograde. There's, there's no emotional bypass and skipping nah. steps when, with, and I, it's so funny because as I was writing our 2020 book, which we also released during Mercury retrograde, because ah. I, 11, 11, oh my God. Of course, there were so many problems with the printer and we just, you know, couldn't yeah. avoid it. We had to switch some staff we were working with on it, and it was like, you know, yeah. I'm actually still waiting like, for the printer to bill me. I'm like, can you send me the invoice already? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 Tully, you know, I feel like sometimes if you launch something under Mercury Retrograde, it actually can be a positive. And this isn't just me trying to be upbeat. I genuinely believe this because it means something like your, your guide will get republished and republished. So mm. you can do it again next year and next year. I've written... Well, my longest running column that I have here in the UK, which I've been doing for something like 15 or 20 years, wow. I started it, it was for Closer Magazine, I started it under Mercury Retrograde. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, oh my God, they're launching a magazine under Mercury Retrograde. Uh -huh. But to me, what's happened is it just keeps reinventing itself four times a year. Then, the, you know, other magazines have gone by the board, other columns have disappeared, and yet this one just keeps coming back and coming oh. back. And, you know, that's Mercury retrograde to me. That's I love know, that spin on it. Yes. No, there is. Yeah, always... Exactly. You just have to dig a little deep. I mean, every contract we yeah. ever sign that seems to last a long time. Also for us, that's so true. With L Meg, we did that I know. And you just they, can't, yeah. you can't stop life because of Mercury. You just can't, you know? And no, you just not. roll with it. And, and moons are another one of your specialties, I know. And uh, we're starting the year off with a pretty intense um, lunar yeah. eclipse in Cancer. On we are. We are indeed. Yeah. And uh, I was going to try and look at my computer about this uh, 
about this eclipse. But um, basically, what I want to say about the eclipse is this. Um, you know, it would be really convenient if the year could start with a new moon eclipse because obviously it's the new year it's the new moon we all want to get on with our lives and start all our new projects and do all our new things and obviously a new moon or a new moon eclipse would be ideal right. however this year on the 10th of january apart from in sydney where it's the 11th of january um we get the full moon eclipse in the sign of cancer so my take on this is that the best thing we can do is actually use it as a way to kind of finally sweep out whatever is left from 2019 that we've had to deal with that we haven't let go okay so i mean what the way i see it is you know january or december the 31st we're all going to be like yeah bye 2019 and any bad things that happened and january 1 will be like yeah welcome the new year but maybe because of the way the eclipse is falling, maybe actually by the time we get to the 10th of January, we're going to see, you know what, that's like, that was a man-made thing, that January the 1st celebration. But now let's really do the emotional work with the eclipse and, uh, and, and work with it. And, and for me, the best way to work with it is with forgiveness. Um, you know, forgiving anything that's happened in 2019 that you didn't love, that upset you, anyone who upset you, you know, I mean, if I could just keep blathering on here, I mean, to me, yes, one, of, one, of, <laughs> one of the best ways to um, really release karma is through forgiveness. And one of the best ways I know to forgive someone is to take a really kind of like an elevated spiritual view on it and think of the possibility that that person and you had a soul contract that you had to fulfill in order for you to learn a lesson you know like i i can there have been things in my life this year in 2019 which is when we're recording this uh you know that haven't been all smooth sailing that have been troublesome have been difficult you know there's one thing in particular that happened which was difficult involved someone i know and you know, like, oh, really? You're going to be like that? But, mm -hmm. oh, my God, the lessons I learned from that situation. So I can forgive that person by thinking, you know what? Maybe our souls had that agreement that I had to learn this stuff in order to evolve and to learn the lessons that I learned. So that's a really good thing on, on the January the 10th, um, the 11th in Sydney, is think about what do I need to forgive from 2019 as i move into the new year because forgiveness is said to release karma and once you release the karma you don't have to keep going through the lessons so you know that would be That's that so would be powerful right. and especially because we've got evolutionary pluto and karmic saturn coming together in capricorn basically opposite yes. the that eclipse too so yeah i mean yeah. i love what you're saying here because yeah. So you, this could be a really big karmic release. So forgiveness is yeah. the release of that karma. And, that, and I imagine we, and we may have to dig pretty deep for some of the forgiveness during this, this eclipse. Or maybe yeah. forgive ourselves a bit too in some ways. That's a really big one. In fact, there's two really important points there, Tali. I think the first one is, you know, the digging deep. You know, it's not always easy to forgive someone. And I always remember getting this email from a woman. You know, I've been talking about this for probably about 20 years. And I remember this would have been at least 10, 10 or so years ago. I hope she's better by now. But she had had an awful experience with her ex-partner, who I think had been physically violent with her. And she wrote to me and she said, you know, you're always talking about forgiving at the full moon. Because I always say, you know, when the emotions come up at the full moon, they're easy to access. You might as well work with them. Right. And, you know, forgiveness is the way to move on. And, um, you know, and, and she said, but I, you know, I just can't forgive this, this guy for what he did. And I'm like, that's absolutely fine because we're not always ready to forgive. But at least if we have the intention, to forgive and we can start to chip away at whatever you know hurt there is that's basically causing a, a wall around our heart um and you know again talking about the digging deep you know um I, 
it's actually the jury's out on who said this. Some people think it was Buddha. Let's say it was Buddha. Um, that uh, holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You know, so you can stay angry with someone and maybe that's more empowering than feeling completely flattened by them. But if you can start to move towards forgiveness, if you can really dig deep, it's actually for you. It's not for them. It doesn't mean what they did was okay. You know, that's a really important point. It just means you are moving on from it. You are not taking it into 2020, you know, forgiveness because it's not agreeing it's not condoning, but it's accepting exactly. that that happened. And maybe the person did the best. I've heard the person did the best they did with the tools that they have in this lifetime. Exactly. People usually do the best they can, you know, and even if we think, oh my God, that was your best, you know, <laughs> like, and then that's when the idea of, you know, trying to take the elevator view of thinking, well, maybe this was a karmic contract, you know, what did I learn? Well, I learned X, Y, Z, you know, so there's that, but also the other thing you said, which is really important as well, which is it's so important to forgive ourselves. And um, I was speaking to someone about a year or two ago who's kind of, she's a super cosmic person. She's you know kind of one of my teachers. And she was saying that she feels on a very cosmic energetic level that, uh, that the heavens, as it were, feel that we are too hard on ourselves and we don't forgive ourselves enough. So, you know, as you sit down to think about forgiveness, hopefully on January the 10th, and you, because full moon is always about releasing, okay, but full moon eclipses are triply about releasing. So as you sit down under the full moon eclipse on January the 10th, you know, have a think about who you need to forgive from 2019 or even way way before that but also what do you need to forgive yourself for for any perceived mistakes you know there are no mistakes obviously everything happens for a reason everything happens for a reason so i say. agree wholeheartedly you know mm -hmm. but what do you need to forgive yourself for and, and that is so healing you know because we, we treat our friends so well, usually, and we treat, hopefully, we treat our family well, but we have to treat ourselves like we would treat a friend, you know? Mm -hmm. So we need to forgive ourselves as well. So, you know, it's such a powerful start to 2020, and, and the year is actually going to play out quite, you know, quite nicely. There's a lot of really positive juju in the air, even though it's starting off with such a bang. Overall, I think we're heading into a pretty good year. Oh, good. I, I love that outlook. The, um, do, do you think that, the, I know we had, we, this is kind of a series of eclipses and we're almost finished with, and I think I'm, I'm challenging myself to remember the dates, July 12th, 2018 was that first Cancer lunar eclipse. And then we had the January 5th, uh, Capricorn eclipse in 2019. Okay. July I'm going to look at my charts here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually... I have a scary memory sometimes for these things with my Mercury <laughs> and Scorpio. Yeah, and then July Scorpio, that Cancer solar eclipse, and then uh, July 16th, Capricorn lunar, and then December 26th. I've got them right here, yeah. Yeah, we had the Capricorn. This one, this J January 10th one is connected to the new moon, the solar eclipse on July 2nd, right, of 2019. That was the new moon, yeah. I know, I just rattled off some dates there. <laughs> Okay, I've got the eclipses here. Yes, okay. So, uh, so this, yeah, the one on January the 10th is at 20 degrees of Cancer. Ah, okay, mm hmm. 20 degrees, very close to that Saturn Pluto at 24. And yeah. how does it connect? Do you think that um, because it's sort of the, do you think of the full moons as manifestation points of the new moons in your work that you do? Do you find that it connects? Um, you know, somebody else said this to me the other day that uh, it was in a workshop I was giving and she said, you know, do you feel like the new moon in Capricorn then will, you know, find its fruition at the full moon in Capricorn? So, right. And I was like, I've never tested that. I've hmm. never tested that. So, and now you're mentioning it. So obviously I'm meant to test this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Is looking back. Is it something back. you've tested? Well, yeah, I'm, I was just thinking back, you know, I've heard it and I think it, I, I always kind of try to reflect back to the new moon, but yeah, it 
sometimes it sometimes there's a clear link and sometimes not you know but i'm sure if i did i'm just thinking what will manifest from that july 2nd solar eclipse of 2019 maybe a connection point to this january 10th lunar you know okay i know they're so not you're talking about the sorry the july 2 one is that what you're talking yeah. about yeah yep mm-hmm Okay, all right. Well, I mean, you know, the only way to find out is to test it. There we are. There's anybody who can see it. There. Oh, no, that's that's <laughs> not what I wanted to show you. Uh, there we are. That's my desktop. Can you see that? That's that's the uh, the June eclipse that yeah. it would be relating back to. I mean, I have not tested this. I think I'm going to have to test this in 2019, uh, 2020, because you're the second person to mention it to me. I've been working with the moon for about 20 years, and it's only this year I've heard this theory. So I don't know if somebody's suddenly come out with it and it's going round, mm -hmm. um, but I've never read about it in any books. I've never read, I've never heard about it until this year. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I, um, you know, I learned that from Susan Miller, and I've, I've been working with right. that. Um, and I think there's a connection, a correlation of in what you start at the new moon, you get the harvest kind of at the full moon there for sure. But at the full moon in the same sign or the full moon two weeks later? Um, the full moon in the same sign, but you work with it two weeks later, huh? So the way I do, the way I do yeah, what my work me. basically is, I'll tell you the way I do it. So this is the way I've done it for years and you're like literally about 20 years so the idea is that I strongly believe in the law of attraction and in conscious creation and I I don't just believe in it I live it like my whole life this very room I'm sitting in right now is all part of a very very conscious creation that I live by but I'm also strongly connected to the divine to yeah. the universe, whatever you want to call it. So the system that I use is really a hybrid of, you know, plenty of other people's systems with my own spin and some of my own additions. And it basically goes, new moon, set your intentions, you know, get clear on what you want. That's why I'm saying it would be you know, a bit more convenient if the new year started right. with new <laughs> moon this year. But set your intentions, get clear on what you want, write down your intentions, you know, just get really strongly clear, visualize it, feel it in your body, make new moon wishes, make commitments to yourself, just be really, really clear. And I do this on Facebook all the time, once a month I do it and, you know, we're all doing it, all, all my people and I are all making our wishes and setting our intentions at the new moon. Uh -huh. And then two weeks later, um, we do the full moon work, which involves surrender okay so whatever hasn't come about yet um we surrender it to the divine okay um and also the forgiveness because forgiveness will unblock whatever blockages especially talking about forgiving yourself one of the biggest um uh, blockages or challenges to manifesting or to conscious creation is self-doubt or a lack of self-worth. So that's why, you know, if you forgive yourself, it's not just, oh, I'm so nice, I'm forgiving myself. You're actually going to, you know, feel more worthy of whatever right. it is that you want to achieve in your life. So we do a very, I do very, you know, powerful, I would say, full moon forgiveness ceremonies yeah. once a month as well. And uh, we write down our forgiveness lists and we burn them. And, um, and then it all goes around again. And we basically keep going like that. Now, this room that I'm in right now, as you can see, it's the, um, it's the, the first room in our new house that's, uh, that's finished. We've just bought it. We've been renovating it for about two months. And, you know, this house was such a perfect example of the whole intention and surrender, intention and surrender cycle. Um, and I think a lot of people have this experience when they're buying a house. I mean, ours took, this took eight months to buy this house, which was a bit longer than that. That is the long. Yeah. But we kept surrendering it every month and saying, well, if there's something better, there's something better, you know, and eventually we ended up getting this house like for a much better price with all these other things that worked really, really well in our favor. And to me, it's been like this perfect example of why we need to set our intentions at the new moon and then give it all up at the full moon and just keep doing that and keep That's doing so that. so powerful. I mean, a lot of people think like, 
when I set my intentions, universe, why haven't you sent me my gifts? And <laughs> yeah. uh, right. And it's that surrendering process that actually, because you know, it's a man plans, the universe laughs kind of thing, you know, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> the law of attraction is not about forcing and, you know, did I, I think your camera went off. Hang on, hang on. I'm coming back. There we are. Sorry. Some time a window. <laughs> yeah. I'll, have, I'll have our, um, I'll have that edited out. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, people sometimes think that, uh, you know, oh, I have to force this to happen or, oh, TikTok universe, where's my, you know, yeah. and that, that surrendering allows, like you just said, that something better can come through. So there's going to be a like triple dose surrendering with this cancer uh, if lunar eclipse then. And then our first new moon is a couple weeks later. So the new year, new you vibes can start um, with the Aquarius new moon this year. Since that's yes, exactly. 24th, exactly. Right? We get the new moon in Aquarius. Um, yes, that's right. The new moon in Aquarius, which has got a, a lovely align, harmonious line between Mercury and Mars. So one thing I was uh, thinking about the Mercury Mars and the new moon is that that is actually kind of like the one to tune into for the year ahead because uh, it's going to be the first new moon of 2020 and because it's got this Mercury Mars um, I actually don't know if it's an it's a, it's a sextile or a trine I haven't written it down but um, I know it's, I'm waiting it's for that Mars in Sagittarius being a Sag sun I'm like ah. Yes. Perfect. So we've got the Mercury Mars sextile. You know, so Mercury is the planet of the mind, obviously. Mars is the planet of determination and going for it. And then we've got the new moon taking place in Aquarius. So, you know, what you get here is a really good time to then set your mind to what you want to achieve for the year ahead. And, you know, like, I always think the new year is a little bit of a challenging time to be, um, you know, making all your intentions, even though I usually do them. And I'm, I love doing new moon and uh, new year resolutions and I do them with my, my husband and my son. We all sit down on January the 1st and write down what we want. But it's kind of, it's often quite a tiring part of the year because we've just had Christmas and then we all stay up late on New Year's Eve and then it's New Year's Day and we just want to sleep. And, you know, in a way, the new moon, which is going to come, let's see, it's the... It's the 24th of January everywhere in the world, except for Sydney, where it's the 25th. Okay. Um, it's a really good one if you say, okay, now I'm really ready to plot out my 2020 and I know it's going to be a good one. So, you know, what am I going to, what plans am I going to set for myself? And I love that it's an Aqu I feel like Aquarius starting off our planning that with Aquarian energy, really allows for some, you know, imagination and innovation and then Mars and Mercury giving that like really thoughtful. And I, f I feel like, I wonder if there'll be a lot of kind of physical and intellectual, get all the emotions out with that cancer lunar eclipse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then use your higher yeah. mind, you know? Yeah, because the, 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 I mean, full moons are always emotional. Full moon eclipses, which is what we've got on January 10th, always super emotional and then in the sign of cancer like the softiest oh, sign Lord. of all <laughs> the moon in aquarius is lovely because in fact aquarius is kind of a very cool and slightly detached energy so i always feel like with aquarius you know we've all got aquarius in our chart somewhere this is not a commentary on aquarians um but you know it, you can almost step back a little and, and instead of being all emotionally pent up you can kind of actually think okay what do i actually want to create for myself in the coming year with a bit of detachment that's going to serve quite well some nice objectivity for it exactly yeah. And then we have, you know, we have, uh, I think, what, two more eclipses to finish up that series. There's that June 21st Cancer Solar Eclipse. Yep. We have two, two new moons in Cancer this year. So that's Excellent. two new moons. I, let's just uh, clock in that. And then we have the... Yeah. I mean, the new moon in Cancer in the middle of the year, the new moon eclipse in Cancer. Yeah. Uh, Right on the summer. Uh, and is that when Mercury is retrograding Cancer as well? Oh, it is. That's right. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, that time of the year, that middle part of the year is going to be all about, 
you know, really going into our hearts about and our feelings, because cancer is a really feeling sign, but also about home and family and who do we want to see and who do we miss and who do we want to reconnect with? Because we've got new moon in cancer. I think Mercury's in retrograding cancer right. around that time. So it's going to be a very sort of, you know, familial time. If you can, if you can, you know, plan anything for the family, with the family at that point, it's actually going to be quite good because, you know, especially with Mercury going retrograde in cancer, that's quite a big deal because, you know, it's really time to go back and see if you can heal things from your family's past because, you know, all our families have issues. I think all families have issues. So it's going to be a really good time to be looking at healing as well. Oh, yeah. And I even wonder, it feels like the families of countries, you know, like <clears throat> there's been a lot of devices, I was just thinking, you know. <laughs> about the royal family. Oh, true. Yeah. All oh, right. Whose family are you thinking of? Well, I'm even thinking of just like the you know, sort of universal family of people who share the same country, you know, sit fellow citizens, you know, yeah. that sort of patriotic energy that sometimes cancer can bring up, like maybe some yeah. feeling we, we certainly need it over here in the United States. Well, isn't, isn't the Amer isn't American <clears throat> cancerian? Yeah. Yeah. July 4th. So mm -hmm. Mercury will be retrograde. I think until July 12th, I believe, or something right around there. Yeah. Right. I'm just quickly looking if I can find it. I was thinking about that. That was my beloved grandmother's birthday. So I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> I always remember that eclipse happened on there in 2018. And yeah. So we have yeah. so deep healing, everyone, right in the middle of the year there for sure. By the way, how. Yeah. How can people, so can, if people join your, your Facebook, then it then they can do these new moon and full moon healings with yeah, you? Yeah, I, I do, I tend to do them on, on uh, the Hay House page, but if you, if, they, if people go to moonmessages.com, moonmessages.com forward slash F be events for Facebook events. Mm. Um, they'll find they'll always find the links there to uh, whatever I'm doing online or actually workshops in person as well. Oh, cool. I mean, it's really really amazing doing them because um, you know even someone who who's really connected to the moon as I am, you know, it's very easy on the night of the new moon. You know, if I don't know my son's got a big homework project or something like that, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't really invest all the time I want to this this month I'll just go and help him or whatever doing the Facebook lives for Hay House which I've been doing for about six months now is the most wonderful discipline because it's like no I have to do it because yeah. I'm expecting to do it and I come up to now this is this is the room that I do them in in the new house and I have my beautiful little table my little altar and I get my bells and my chimes and my crystals oh, and my cool. charts and my cards and I do them with absolute full gusto and it's just, it's just so special. Like, I mean, it's just made me practice what I preach every single month. And it's so powerful, you know, because I always think like, if you're not really manifesting something, do you really need to connect? But I think actually, I think as humans in general and as women in particular, I honestly think that honoring the moon cycles even if you just pay attention to the new moon and the full moon or the waxing and the waning cycle i think it, it really changes your life for the better it literally is the rhythm that women are wired by and exactly. to sort of you know divorce ourselves from that doesn't even make sense we can't you know so that is yeah so, so everybody moon messages dot com forward slash fb events Yes. So do you have any other thoughts on the eclipses of 2020? Because I know we're finishing one series of Cancer Capricorn and then moving into the Gemini Sagittarius uh, series in the summer that's going to kind of overlap. What do you think? How do you think that'll affect us all? Well, I mean, I, I suppose what I would make of that is the fact that wherever you have cap the sign of Cancer or Capricorn in your chart, is where it's been intense, you know, for quite a long time because we've had Saturn, Pluto, and we've had the eclipses, and now we're going to have Jupiter kind of lightning, excuse me, lightening things up a bit. But I, I suppose what's really happening is, you know, if people can get to know their charts a little bit. Wherever you have the sign of Cancer and the sign of Capricorn has been where the intensity has been. And now it's going to shift a little bit because at least Jupiter's now moved into Capricorn. So 
that's lightening things up already where there was just this intensity. Saturn's actually yeah. going to move out of Capricorn into Aquarius and then we're going to be having the eclipses in Gemini and Sag. So the whole mood is changing. And I suppose what I would say is, you know, um, don't wish it away. It's not over yet. I mean, it's peaking in January and it's all about shedding our skin and shedding the past and shedding what you no longer want. And again, I know that we this, this video will be watched, you know, beyond January, but if you're yep. watching it at the start of the year, really make the effort to let it all go, okay? Pluto is the plumber of the zodiac, you know? You know when the sink is blocked? I mean, I don't need to tell you, I'm telling you. I was well. talking about that with when, someone else, the planetary plumber, I love that you said. Yeah, when the sink is blocked and you get the plunger and you go like that and you go, boom, 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 but it all comes out. That's Pluto. And Pluto's being activated. So, and then, you know, the landscape's gonna shift and you're gonna feel the landscape shifting. But before all that happens, like Saturn moving into Aquarius in March and, you know, then the Gemini, Sag eclipses and all that, before that happens, try and learn the lessons because all this isn't happening just to drive you mad or make you sad or cause you problems. It's happening because on some level we have these lessons to learn and we are here, I believe, we are here to evolve. So all this stuff is trying to help us evolve. So instead of just saying, oh, my God, I can't wait till Saturn's left, Capricorn, I can't wait till the eclipses are over. Just, you know, dig in deep and go further and just think, you know, what have I been learning? And try, if you can, if you're really enlightened, have some gratitude for the lessons you've learned. I mean, obviously, some people have been through things that it's impossible to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. But if, if you can at all find it in yourself, if you're lucky enough to be able to have that perspective to sort of find some kind of perspective and think okay i've learned that that is something that i've got for the rest of my life you know hopefully you're lucky enough to have experienced problems which are easy enough to kind of think that about and 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 try and learn the lessons um, if you possibly can because otherwise it's just all hard work for no reason right it's like the struggle is real but it's also here for a reason and to just sort of you know, try to banish it. I mean, exactly. I thought having Jupiter and Sagittarius in 2019 was going to be so much fun, but <laughs> was wearing Neptune, it was, you know, it was yeah. it really brought out a lot of like hard lessons and, you know, so things can illuminate, you know, what, you know, as, as full moons and the lunar eclipses can really illuminate things that can be tough and painful, but don't run from them surrender i love the word the idea of surrendering and you know just yeah. your house is a great example there you know so it just yeah how long do I you mean, know it was i'll tell you charlie there are details about this house which i don't go into because they're just too personal they do my finances and all this but if you know my friends who know the real story even the ones who don't believe in astrology at all you know like they go it's incredible, like down to the very day when we bought the house, all these pieces of the jigsaw fell into place. It was, and it was pure surrender and it was hard, but it was worth it. I have, I have goosebumps from that. Now, I'm just <laughs> curious, do you, are you an 1111 person? Have you, do you see 1111 on clocks a lot too? No, I don't actually. I see a lot of people talking about 1111. I actually see a lot of 108 or 1108 but oh. that could be because i'm quite i'm quite into the whole hindu pantheon of goddesses especially and 108 and double 108 is kind of a sacred number so that's what i tend to oh. see but numbers appear to you i know you seem very you seem like the, it seems like the veil is very thin for you and <laughs> <laughs> Which is wonderful, yeah. I, I have on my Facebook, on my private Facebook um, page, it, there's a picture of a, a beautiful woman on a unicorn and, and it says, um, someone told me I was delusional. I almost fell off my unicorn. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> so do you think, is there any particular flavor to Gemini Sagittarius eclipses that are coming in? Like, where will the balance be, do you think, for us as people with hope? After this yeah I mean I mean the thing is with you know the whole Gemini Sag thing okay I feel like 
and I could be wrong, but this is my take. I feel like Gemini in some ways, even though it's been a long time, is still in recovery from Pluto. You know, the sign that it was in before Cancer, uh, before Capricorn was um, Sagittarius and Geminis and Sagges, I think are both still a bit in recovery. <laughs> and, and I think Jupiter maybe helped things a bit. I mean, I don't know how it takes to recover from Pluto, um, but I feel like Sag and Gemini are still in recovery. And now you're going to have the eclipses. Maybe that's going to be a breakthrough. I don't know. I, I, I haven't thought that much about it, but I, I think that maybe it's the new start because, you know, you guys had Pluto you know, for Sag and Gemini. I'm sorry, I said Gemini just to start with. I meant Sag and Gemini. Sag and Gemini had Pluto really powerfully in their chart for a long time. And that can be a real breaking down. That was, of stuff. That was as a Sagittarius, I don't know, from 1995 to 2008. We had yeah, yeah, right. long... And then we had Saturn come in and kick our butts from 2015 to 2017. And it was, just, yeah. I feel like, yeah, it's like Jupiter it was. It wasn't as easy to be a happy go lucky Sag or no. you know, Gemini, you know, lighthearted, schmoozing Gemini. Exactly. So I feel like maybe the eclipses are going to be kind of like the new start. I mean, hopefully Jupiter kick started that, but maybe this, yeah. the eclipses are going to be the new start of the really new energy. Because for me, eclipses are like, to me, I don't think it's just because I'm into the moon. I feel like eclipses are kind of the biggest thing in astrology, you know, that where the eclipses are is where the attention of the universe is you know, in your chart. And if it's your sign or your rising sign, then it's obviously much more powerful. But whatever house it lands in, find that on your chart, everyone. And, and yeah. those areas of life are going to be impacted by these eclipses. And there's no, that's where the energy, the surrender, the forgiveness goes and the new implement. Yeah. So cool. I mean, it's, it's always going to be a new start in some way. Um, if, if you happen to be Gemini or Sag or Gemini or Sag rising or Cancer or Capricorn, who are also having eclipses, it's very much about new, you know, letting go and new starts, letting go and new starts. And we all get them. Like with eclipses, I'm never really sure whether to look forward to them or to think, oh my God, here they come. You know, it's like it's, <laughs> they're, they're a double edged sword. But, you know, you're really, at the end of the day, you just have to, I lo so surrender, everyone, surrender, you know, because, <laughs> well, I'm yeah. kind of glad that 2020 is getting, starting with a full moon instead of a new one, because, you know, it's, it really, this has, 2019 has been a year of intensity. I said it was a bit like one foot on the gas, one foot on the brakes with Saturn and Jupiter both in their home signs for most of the year. It was like, go, wait, stop, you know? And so there, I think people have a little bit of whiplash from that. And maybe this January 10th lunar eclipse will kind of help us to release yeah. the, or forgive the things that didn't work out or that got false starts or people who didn't maybe work out in contracts. I think there's going to be, I, there's a lot of, there's a lot to put on the altars for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're yeah. Gonna, and, and all we can do is embrace it. Right. You know, and, and I mean, you know, I think it's, it's Stephen Forrest, the astrologer Stephen Forrest, who's always talking about living intentionally. And I like to talk about living consciously. You know, if you live intentionally and consciously as you go into all of this, you know, just try and think, how can I, how can I evolve? It's always comes, what it comes down to for me is how can I evolve through all this? Uh, and I'll just say one more thing, Tali, like, you know, whatever's happening for you in 2020, whether you're looking at the chart and going, oh, amazing, or if you're looking at the chart and thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, one thing I really got from 2019 is, and I strongly associate the Hindu elephant god Ganesha with this. So imagine an elephant just trudging through the jungle, going through all the brush and the thicket and all this. The only way out is through. You know, like you have to go through this stuff. So you might as well do it consciously and intentionally. Ah, the only way out is through everyone. That's my, my <laughs> saying for 2019. Oh yeah. And now we're th we'll soon be through it by the time everyone's watching this. And then maybe yeah. have a good collective cry as with the lunar eclipse. <laughs> 
little let those tears flow with that lunar eclipse in cancer yeah really yeah. good idea really yeah. good idea uh-huh I know I feel I feel I've was I've been feeling a little weepy already and and for no good reason you know <laughs> maybe I'm just for you know preparing for it you know so yeah, no, it's so good to cry Oh my God, it's so healing. Well, where can people find more about more about you? So moonmessages.com slash FB events and then yeah. yasminbolin.com and your Moonology Diary is already basically sold out for 2020, right? Which is it's pretty much sold out. Wow. Um, you can find it like there's a few, like on Facebook, people are saying, oh, I found a copy in a shop in, you know, Fort Worth or whatever. And someone goes in and grabs it. So it's but, but, a hot you know, it's commodity. A, it's in demand. It's some independent bookshops at this point in right. America. Support the independent bookshops, everyone. That's always a good thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for hopping on in your newly thank renovated. Thank you, Carly. You know, I'm a big fan of you guys. So. Yeah, it was so great to that that blue wall is uh, that's a beautiful color. It looks great. You look great against it. So thank you. <laughs> Do all your Facebook lives against that wall. Hey. Come and stay in the guest room one oh, day. Yes, you're invited. Oh, that would be so fun. Yeah, I'll, I'll never leave in that with that. <laughs> well, it's not a huge room, actually. You won't want to stay for that long. Okay, <laughs> I'll come for a I'll come for a new moon. That would be amazing. Come for a week, yeah. yeah. Come oh, that's so sweet. Well, uh, happy 2020 to you, Yasmin. And Thank you. All the best for the year ahead. All right, and have a great uh, lunar eclipse start to the year. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.